Hey people of the interweb, I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back to Trilby's Notes. What will either be the second to last, or third to last episode, I would assume. Alright, so I think what we're doing is we're looking for, um... Leg, or... Body parts? Like porcelain, porcelain doll body parts, or something like that. Open door. Hi. Talk to a bed about Siobhan. I think I'm spelling that wrong. Siobhan. Has Siobhan turned up yet? I don't care about her anymore. She can make her own choices if she wants to run around with any old smooth talker in it. Oh my gosh. This head will be my new assistant. It would be a much better one. Ask a bed for head. May I borrow that head, Professor? Oh, I see. You took one companion of mine away, and now you want another. A bed, it's just a head. What could you possibly need it for? You don't understand. No one understands me. Go get me a drink, then we'll talk. Okay, fine. Oh my god. Now I have use for the wine that I thought I didn't need last time. Open door. Okay, well, time to go back in the kitchen. Open door. What's the likelihood of me going back into the alternate realm while looking for this and trying to take it to a bed? Take wine. I took the wine. Perhaps this would appease the drunken professor ups upstairs. If I can say that term. Open door. Take... I'm not dealing with this. I have hunting to do. Take pill. <laughs> Took another pill. Open door. Professor? Where's he gone now? Oh my gosh. Open door. What in the world? Well, here's the leg. Take leg. Or one of the legs. I took the leg. I'm gonna search every room. Open. Door. Oh, of course there's one in here. Take leg. I took the leg. So I've got the legs. I need the head and the arms now. Um, open. Door. Open door. I don't remember that being there. Take arm. I took the arm with me. That's really weird, man. Open door. Okay. Now what? Go to a bed's room, I'd assume. No. Of course. Take pill. Took another pill. Open. Door. Door was stuck shut. Knock. Well, knock, yeah. Can knock on door. There was no reply. Okay. Open. Door. That's why there was no reply, because there's no one in here. Open. Door. See in here? Knock 
on door. There was no reply. Open door. And no one's in there. Where in the world did he go? Open door. Open door. Pushed my way through the door and descended the fire escape. Well, there's not a leg here. Where's the leg? No, no, where's the other arm? The head is with the bed, but where's the bed? Climb ladder. Okay. Huh. Well, ain't this just a puzzler? Maybe my pickle can help me. <laughs> I don't know. Where are you? What do I do, Pickle? Eh, you're no help. Open. What the hell? Open door. Ta tail. Take. Pill. Took another pill. Climb. Ladder. Okay, so no matter what, you end up climbing back up to the... That's good development. That's good design. Okay, I can't do anything here because the door's jammed. Huh. Where would a bed be? Maybe in his, uh... Maybe he's in his little area. His little... Oh, what is it? Display area? Maybe he's in the display area. No. Let's go look. By the way, lights on in the back for a reason. Because I was testing it the last episode you guys saw, I was testing out to see how that looked. I still think I prefer this. Open door. He's not in here either. Where the hell is he? Uh, open door. Nope. Open door. Open door. E door. No. It's not an electric door. Open door. Alright then. Open door. Alright. Let's search this room then. Open door. Yep, that's no help. That is no help. I don't want to be here. Wait a minute. Ooh, the Y? Open door. It feeds. Does it now? Open door. No. Open door. Open door. Okay, that looks horrifying. Open door. Open door. Oh god, no. He shifted. That's not good. Look. A bed. A bed's drunken misery had caused him to shift into the dark hotel. The jolly man of whom I had grown fond lay decapitated on the floor. With Siobhan's disappearance, I was now truly alone. The professor had known nothing of the horror. He was blameless and ignorant of any matter involving Defoe Manor or a, curse, a cursed idol, but it seemed my dark captor cared little for these facts. Why haven't you killed me too, you skinny bastard? If you can do it so easily, so quickly, why won't you face me? 
In a display of a warped sense of humor, the porcelain head was sitting where Bed's old one had been. Yeah. I don't want to, but take head. I pulled the head out of the, the stump, trying not to think about the wet cracking noise this caused. Ah! Ah! No! Close eyes. Open. I hope I'm spelling this right. D O O R. Okay, good. Ew. So I've got the head, one of the arms, and both of the legs. Now all I'm missing is... I'm... Well, is the other arm up there, actually? Because if it is, then I'm good. I'm good to go. But that still leaves one question. Where the hell did Siobhan go? I question so much right now. Or maybe I accidentally already gave him one. Place leg. I replace the right arm. I replace the left arm. Leg, I replace the right leg. I replace the head. Okay, then I'm just missing one thing. Where's the left arm? Open door. The door was stuck shut. Okay, how about this one? Open door. Chizo, love me. Open door. So, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about something. Door stuck shut. The thing I'm confused about is what. what it kind of makes. It kind of sounds like Cabadath. For once, I actually remembered the name. Um, it sounds like Cabadath is the real antagonist in this whole franchise, the whole series here. Open door. Door stuck shut. Great. Open door. Which is it? Wait, is that the arm? Is that the other arm? Take arm. I doubt that I could have taken that with me. Look. Blood splatters covered every wall and surface in the room, as if someone had lost a fight with someone, some horrible beast here. Metal tables and some kind of stone altar all showed evidence of recent slaughter. A mangled old sofa stood in one corner. Look, sofa. The sofa was a rotten green color and some kind of sharp weapon had created a slash right across the fitted cushions. Guess it's not an arm. Looks like one, but I guess it's not. Okay. Open door. I do have a feeling that the last one's gonna be in here. Open door. And not in this room, I mean in the alternate realm. Why do I get the feeling the prince hasn't even touched Seoban? Open door. Door was stuck shut. Okay, how about this one? Open door. Yeah, of course. Open door. I've looked literally everywhere. That it's not in here. It's not in this area. Where is that last bit? I have to use the walkthrough again, even though I really, really, really don't want to. Just in case.
Okay, apparently 3C is open in the normal. I never thought of that. Never would have thought of that. Maybe that's my room. Because I haven't been to Trilby's room yet. Or... Have I? I don't think I have. Take pill. I took another pill. 3C, I believe. Okay. Open. Door. This must be my... Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. Take. Arm. Why is it on my bed? I wasn't close enough. There we go. Take. Arm. Took the arm with me. That's the last of it. Open. Door. Haven't we seen this already? Okay. I'm pretty sure we've seen that already. Just like go back and forth between... How many times do you have to go back and... Ah, ah, there it is. There it is. There it is. Okay, go up. Bring her back. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Place arm. I replaced the left arm. The body was intact. For reasons I couldn't explain, I sensed that something had changed back in the real world. What kind of ridiculous locking mechanism is this? I don't know. Take pill. I took another pill. So... You unlock it by doing that? That's weird. It means no matter what you do in this world, you can't unlock it. If you're just stuck in this world, you can't unlock it. That's weird. That is really weird. Open. Door. I thought he wanted to meet me up here. Uh, look. Just look. It hurts. That's it? That's all you got? It hurts? Look. Floor. It hurts. Take. Note. That's a lot of it hurts. That is a lot of it hurts. Uh, lo just look. The view of the island was spectacular, but most of the roof seemed to be sectioned off by a metal fence. Just about the only feature within reach was a piece of paper held down by the stone. Take paper. Oh, there's the first one. Clan Bronwyn Island, July 28th, AD 1501. A sturdy treatise. It took us from dawn to dusk, but we finally have it down. I'm tired, father. T'was indeed clever of us to investigate this island, eh, boy? I have never seen such a giant oak, nor do I expect to again. But its wood shall keep us in the business of carpenter for years. Father, look at these. Do you think there was once a house here? It matters not. Why must you always look everywhere but at what matters? This is your... Father? Is something troubling you, Father? What the f... Uh. Cabinath? Please don't. No. That's my... Uh. Scream? It hurts. I didn't understand the word hurts. Um, what do I do? What do I do? Run? Use the cursor key. I can't. Take 
What is that, a ball? Just take. Boyle doubted that he could have taken that with him. What is that? Take? Ball? I didn't understand what- how do you know? Talk to Prince about father. Drawing attention to himself in that way would potentially have been suicidal. What the hell do I do? Um... What the fu- I- ugh. I wanna run, but it's not letting me go anywhere. Um... Uh... Scream! I didn't understand the word scream. Die. Boyle couldn't do that just then. Um... Oh, that's a is that a stone, maybe? Throw stone at tall man. Or prince, I guess. It would be suicide to attack the tall man if he had it. Pick a stone. Throw stone at Prince. Really? That's literally the same thing. Where am I? Truly! Sealbon? Oh, thank God. I thought I was all alone. What happened to you? I don't know. After you knocked me out in my room, I woke up and everything was like this. The hotel's ruined. There's blood everywhere. I saw this horrible man. Tall, thin, long, black cloak. You know him? Enough to know you're lucky to be alive. He didn't notice me, so I ran up here to hide. How did you get past the doll? What doll? Trilby, what the hell is going on? I told you what would happen if you followed me into the shadows. This isn't your problem. Take these. What are these? Tranquilizer pills. Take one. When you calm down, the hotel will go back to normal. Won't you need them? I don't need to run away anymore. Trilly? Where are you going? I know enough now. I know where the wood came from. Perhaps I can find a way to end this. So I was right. The cursed wood came from Clan Bowman Island. But what goes down that knowledge? I didn't even get the chance to finish that. Wait a second. I never got around to reading the letter I took. Truly, I am very close to ending this. Meet me in the hotel basement. I must show you my discovery. Nightman. The other page was another of those religious papers. The Book of Victims. Victim 1. The Woodcutter. The first of those against whom the prince sought vengeance was the woodcutter. He who had held the axe that first felled the tree. The prince came to him and his son, and he struck the woodcutter down. And the woodcutter knew the name of the king. And the prince turned to the woodcutter's son, and he said, You I shall let live. For you are young and are of the innocent, and that you may go among your people and tell them of what I will rot. And the woodcutter's son fled, and told all of what he had seen. But the men of technology are arrogant, and his words were unheeded. So, because they were unheeded... They didn't take them into consideration, and one by one, like we saw, specific ones died because they didn't seem to consider this at all. Kind of like the Lorax. It's just a tree! What tree won't do any harm? Mm, I guess it does. Don't hurt the trees. 
Moral of the, moral of the story of the Chizo Mythos series. Don't hurt the trees. That's a outright lie, but, you know. Whatever. You want me to meet you in the basement? <sighs> Fine. Okay. Open. Door. Take. Pill. I doubt that I could have taken that with me. Oh, right. You gave the pills to... Okay. So. Open. Door. Wait a minute. The bugs aren't here no anymore. What the hell? Go down. Use the cursor key. I can't. Look. The grimy cellar had been abandoned for some time. A large section of the floor was worn away. Someone had dug a hole. Okay. Enter. Hole. Oh. Uh, what the hell is going on? Is this what's causing the back end? That's the tree, isn't it? Look. I was in some kind of cabin dug out of the rock beneath the hotel. It seemed to be in a constant state of flux, flitting back and forth between the real world and its dark twin. I was certain that the gigantic stump in the middle of the floor had something to do with this. Uh, look, stump. This was it, I was certain. The remains of the tree that Boyle and his father cut down, its wood being later used to construct an inn, a hopsichord, a shipping crate, and an idol. I could feel the same scrabbling in my mind that I had felt just before all my visions. This time, it was the stump itself that seemed to be beckoning me closer. Okay, I guess touch the stump. Stump. Clan Roman Peninsula, July 28th, 55 BC. Cabadath, a Celtic druid, awaits the return of his friend and colleague, Galden, who brings news of the invasion of Anglici by the Roman Suetonius Paulinus. Having fallen out of favor with his fellows for certain radical beliefs, and activities, Cabarath lives in solitude in this remote forest clearing and prefers not to travel himself. Cabarath! Golden, you bring news? The foreigners have landed. They could not deter it. A sorcery. Sorcery. Oh, Captain, are you? The, they are making their way across the land, eliminating resistance. Even you out here will be brought down with her within days. I'm sorry, Cabadath. And the great druids of Anglesey bow so easily to the brash foreign power. Do not hang your head yet, my friend. Perhaps the activities for which I was ostracized could yet spell an answer. What are you talking about? You know of my dealings with the ethereal realm. I know what you claim that there exists some otherworldly territory populated by demons and creatures of magic, and that you, Kabadath, can somehow commune with these creatures. Come inside, and I shall explain. Oh, okay. Kabadath, what is this madness? In my dealings with the ethereal realm, I have learned of many powerful demons and elementals. But there is one spoken of, one only reluctantly, a beast possessing of awesome power. You plan to summon it? The most terrible of them all, who strikes fear into even the most unflappable creature I have spoken with. A pain elemental, indeed the only pain elemental, ruler of a desolate wasteland where none better. An invulnerable, hugely potent beast that feeds upon it. And today is his day. The day when the boundaries between the realms weaken and he glimpses our world. 
to bring him through at the point should be simple. Even if you could conjure such a thing, how would you have to defend our land? I have much knowledge in the ways of magic. With the correct bindings, any demon can be forced to my will. I completed the preparations when I waited for your return. All that remains is the summoning. Kavanath, it pains me to see you build your hopes on such nonsense. Be silent and watch. You shall see your nonsense soon enough. In this hall of death, and by the light of Berlinius' gift, I summon you. I bring you gifts and mark your pain. I feel you with pain. I call you with madness. I summon you with the greatest loss. And I bind you by your true name, Chizo. By the gods! I have reached out to you through the void, Chizo. I command you to. I command you by your true name. Show yourself. Come on, please, stop this. Show yourself! Hi, Chizo. Hi. By Tantalus, it's huge! It, it is larger than I anticipated. But Chizo must obey the rules of magic. It is bound. I can command it. Oh, really? No! It is far more powerful than I thought. Gordon, help me! Forgive me, Kavanagh. No! Gordon, I beg you, don't let it take me alive. And you're gone. <sighs> Kavanagh. Giselle, of course, has no use for meat. It feeds on pain. It does not kill its prisoners. So what's going on? I don't remember this at all. Kabadath's agony was a particularly rare morsel, and Chizo ensured it would last. His soul was placed inside an oak sapling on the site of his old home to grant his body immortality. For five centuries, as the tree grew, he knew torment beyond even his most depraved imaginings. By then, his body was warped, and his mind long fallen into soulless dementia. He was Chizos, utterly and completely his slave. He was Chizos, utterly and completely his slave. Chubby! Siobhan! You were supposed to leave. I couldn't. I just... But the professor, he's dead. I know. He was killed by the shadows. Just like they will kill you if you don't get away from here. What is this place? This cave is the center of real the reality shift. This stump is what's causing it all. How? It's the vessel for the soul of the toddler. Oh boy. Hi! The acolyte of Chazel. Linkman, nice to see you from the place. Amazing, isn't it? Of all the things Sir Roger could have used to murder his son, he chose that idol. Placing the soul of John Defoe into the wood alongside Kabbalah's. Infusing the poor retard with Chizo's magic, allowing him to come back infinitely more powerful than before. Certainly pretty lucky. Lucky? Chizo had to wait 2,000 years for that opportunity. The opportunity to blend magic and science in a single entity. The opportunity to create the bridge. What are you talking about? The bridge between the realms. Over with Chizo will cross into our universe and purify mankind. Our order has waited 200 years for the prophecy to be fulfilled. You're not with the Ministry of Occultism. Who are you? 200 years ago, the prophet Jack Verhorn founded the Order of Blessed Agonies. Since then, we have grown and watched and waited. It was only in recent years that the events foretold in the Book of Chizou began to occur. It mentioned John Defoe, and it mentioned you. Me? You were the one prophesied to guide the bridgekeeper to his destiny. But you didn't finish the job. All three aspects of John Defoe had to be destroyed to create the bridge, body, mind, and soul. 
You only destroyed his body. His soul and mind remained. Had I known about this, I wouldn't even have done that. That will truly disappoint my superiors. They were quite adamant that I should try to persuade you to join our cause and fulfill your foretold duty. Is that why you were helping me? They thought if I guided you through your visions and showed you the appropriate passages from our holy books, you'd understand that the prophecy is real. You honestly believed I joined some insane cult just because you handed me some leaf leaflets? Personally? No. What the hell? A knife in my gut brought an explosion of ice cold agony. I heard the pitter patter of my blood on the rocky floor. The pain, the surprise, and my exhaustion went together to cause immediate unconsciousness. What the hell? What the hell? I awoke to find myself splayed upon the stump, blood still slowly leaking from my wound. In my injured state, I could barely move. My limbs refused to respond. I was as weak as a newborn. Nick, man. Oh, good, you're awake. I was afraid you'd miss this. What are you doing? After you staggering, after you staggering in a tune, in a film manner, the order needed to, I can finish that. We need a connection to Chizo to help administrate his coming. And today might be the only opportunity we have all year to summon the Talmud. You're going to bring that thing into our world? With a standard ritual of blessed agonies and an offering, after he takes your life, he will be grand he will be grateful to us. And then he will guide us to our destiny. So why did you stab me? What if I'm already dead by the time he gets here? He won't be. Men like you, Trivi, die on their own terms. They don't weakly let their life slip away from one measly. Hush now. Cabaret is coming. Uh oh. Should I be saying die? I call thee, Cabaret, to the wood that is your soul. I call thee from the north, die. Not yet, but I was pretty close. Die! Not yet. Just keep. Oh. Die. Not yet. I called thee from the south. Oh, you said I called thee from the east, I'm gonna guess. I called thee from the west. Die. What the... What in the... What... what, what it, I... Reality fits, fits from realm to realm. And this madness that we may, might bring thee to us. You're insane! And it's... Hi! Die? Not yet, but I was pretty close. Die! Just die already! I present thee with blessed agonies, body, mind, and soul. Die! Not yet, but I was pretty close. I present thee with the guide, failed in his duty for thee to judge. Hi. Die. Come. Die. Oh, come on. Die. Die already. All right. Hi. Die. This concludes the text of the notes found in the Clan Bronwyn Hotel on August 4th. At time of writing, Trilby remains missing in action. Wait a minute. 
What? That's it? Huh. The what? What? I... Okay, well, I guess that's Shelby's notes. Shelby remains missing in action. Probably died to Kabadath, honestly, but... There's no way he survived that. No way. Okay, well that was a bit- that was like twice as long as what I normally do, but hey. We finished the game. Um, so I'm going to leave the series here for now. Uh, we still have six days of sacrifice, however, I do have a little series coming up and planned that I'm going to start recording tomorrow, because I'm going to be up, well, yeah, technically tomorrow, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning right now, so not, not today. Today I'm going to be uploading something, but tomorrow I'll be recording something else. But yeah, I'm going to leave this video here. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode and this series. If you missed anything, you're welcome to check out the playlist next, across from my head over here. Excuse me. I don't even know where that came from. Um... Or if you want to check out any videos horror-related that I've done in the past, go ahead and click that box down over there. Got any suggestions for any other horror games aside from Six Days of Sacrifice, which I'll be doing soon. Enough. I don't know how soon, though. Um, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, in the meantime, though, I'm out, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!